some disappointments so won't you listen to me please cause I know about a savior he came down to be a man and when he left he sent his spirit he made me everything I am he came down to my level when I couldn't get up to his with a strong arm he lifted me up to show me what living is He'll come down to your level if you'll open up the door. He wants to make your life worth living. That's what he came down for. Sometimes I make decisions that later I regret. But the Lord keeps on assuring me he's not finished with me yet. I don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about yesterday I don't worry about this crazy world Cause I've found a better way He came down to my level When I couldn't get up to his With a strong arm He lifted me up To show me what living is He'll come down to your level If you'll open up the door He wants to make your life worth living that's what he came down for. He came down to my level when I couldn't get up to him. With a strong arm, he lifted me up to show me what living is. He'll come down to your level if you'll open up the door. He wants to make your life worth living. That's what he came down for. He wants to make your life worth living. That's what he came down for. You are beautiful beyond description to marvelous for words to wonderful for comprehension like nothing ever seen or heard who can grasp your infinite wisdom fathom the depth of your love. You are beautiful beyond description, majesty enthroned above. And I stand, I stand. 
stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. to marvelous for words, to wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depths of your love. You are beautiful beyond description, majesty enthroned above. And I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand I stand in awe of you, and I stand, I stand in awe of you, I stand, I stand in awe of you, holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand stand in awe of you.
Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. He is Lord of all humanity, and He rules by His word. He is King of all the ages, the first and the last. I'm His child by mercy, forgiven from my sinful past. He is a dying Savior, bruised, shamed, and despised. He is the great Redeemer, giving victory and life. He is the risen conqueror, setting my captive spirit free. And I love Him, yes, I love Him. Because he first loved me When I see who he is I realize what I am And I wonder why a holy God Would ever reach down so far And place me in his hand My ears have heard the story But now my have seen his glory and I can't turn away from his grace I'm incredibly miraculously saved he's my friend and shepherd my shelter from the storm he is closer than a brother he's the rock i lean upon he is my abba father my confidence my love i'm dependent on his goodness lost but for his blood when i see who far and place me in his hands my ears have heard the story but now my eyes have seen his glory and i can't turn away from his grace i'm incredibly miraculously saved incredibly miraculously saved I'm incredibly miraculously saved
used to be for creation. Eternity in your hand. You spoke the earth into motion, my soul now to stand. You stood before my failure and carried the cross for my shame. My sin weighed upon your shoulders, my soul now to stand. What could I say? What could I do? What offer this heart, oh God? Completely to you. So I'll walk upon salvation. Your spirit alive in me This life to declare your promise My soul now to stand So what could I say? And what could I do? heart, oh God, completely to you. So what could I say? And what could I do? But offer this heart Let's go. 
Good evening, everyone. First of all, I'd like to say I'm not a, not a great teacher, I'm not a preacher, but I can stand and share God's word with you. 
I'll leave the rest up to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Let us look to the Father in a word of prayer. Our precious God and Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we are able to gather once again in such a way and to hear from your word and to praise you. Now, as we are gathered so freely doing this, Father, we think of those all over the world that don't have this privilege and this opportunity to gather in this way. We pray for them this time. Father, we just pray that everything is said will give praise to your name and also that your word will convict our hearts that we should love you more, Father. We pray these things in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. You have to bear with me tonight. I have a lot of verses to read. You don't have to turn to them. I will just read them. But the text tonight will be coming from Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 11, chapter 11, verse 9, to chapter 12, verse 1. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9, to chapter 12, verse 1. In the message tonight, what I'm about to say, all of it is not of my knowledge. I got some, some of this from some online scholars. And uh, the message will be remembering God in the days of, of our youth. And also us as adults can continue to remember him. I'll read in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9. Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these things God will bring you into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. Okay. In this book of the Bible, we can find that the way Solomon searched for the meaning of life by where he examined wisdom, his riches, and pleasure also. So he shares, he shares what he saw as not good and also what he saw as good. To those of us who are while still young, here are a few good things that he has to share from this, this portion of scripture. One is rejoice in your youth. Another one would be remove sorrow and evil from your youth. Another one would be remember God in your youth. And then reflect upon what is coming. You can't get away from that. Most young people would probably say they do rejoice in their youth. But what about removing sorrow and evil? And what about remembering God and reflecting on what is to come? These things might seem to us as taking the joy from our youth. There are many good reasons we need to remember God in the days of our youth. One would be, the youth has no guarantee of our future. We are not promised tomorrow. Death, death can come to us at a young age or old age. Age has nothing to do with when we die. That's in God's control and in the power of God. We do not have to be old to die. Reality is, no one is promised the future. In James 4, chapter 14, verse 7, it says, James chapter 4, verses 14 through 17, says, Instead, you ought to say, If the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance, and such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do I already read that, okay. Does not do it, it is sin. All right. 
there's a saying that goes like this. Many who plan to repent at the, at the 11th hour die at 1030. Not said for many. Especially if you're not saved, it's, it's said. One thing we can rejoice in for those of us who know the Lord as our Savior is the Lord is coming back for us. And also as he comes, he's coming to judge. He's coming to judge the people of the earth, the world. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 7 through 11 says, But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack in concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away. The great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it, it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Okay. Where am I? Let me see. Okay. The world will be under God's judgment one day. We all know that. Maybe we don't accept. Some of us don't acknowledge that, but that's a fact. There will be use at that time. We will not have had the benefits of a long life. There will be many who do not have the time to change. As we just read, no man knows when he is coming. So we as youth, or as our youth people, should be prepared for this day. But I challenge, challenge your youth to prepare now, not to wait. It won't be worth it. Even if some are blessed to live a long life and to have plenty of time, to get ready and to change before the Lord comes. Uh, I think my life can relate to this as I had a long life and plenty of time to change. Only by God's grace and love it happened this way to me. Many people this doesn't work out for. There are many people perish before they got the chance. Only by God's grace that I could stand here tonight and read his word. And I thank him for that. There's another reason to remember God in the days of our youth. That is a youth not spent remembering God can result in many bad consequences later on in life. In Galatians 6, chapter 6, verses 7 through 8 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. There's not just our eternal future, but the future in this life, if we live long enough, reflects on remembering God in our youth. We all sow these seeds, or most of us, I should say, as young people, these things I don't want to read, most of us do this. We rebel. We rebel against our parents, our teachers, um, elderly people, Sunday school teachers. We rebel as young people. It's, it's in us. It's a sin nature in us. God has ordered us to submit to authority. In Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 2, 
such that every soul be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Well, rebellion has caused many young people all over the world, maybe not much in this island, to spend, spend most of their lives or all of their lives in prison. It don't happen in this island much that way, but I'm sure all over the world it does from rebellion. We tell lies and think nothing of it as young people. We steal things like it's no big deal or take things that really don't belong to us. And if it doesn't not belong to us, it is stealing. We also we fornicate as young people. This is it's outraging amongst young people all over the world today. Sex amongst young unmarried people is very popular in the days, in these days. Yet so many does not think of the high price to pay for this. I can say in shame, I didn't care about the high price that was to be paid for this. But I could also say, the Lord Jesus paid that price for me on the cross. Yeah, STDs is just one thing you can look at. Pregnancy, also forced marriage, which sometimes leads to, leads to divorce. And we can't forget, young people, we cannot forget the drugs. The drugs and the alcohol and the substances, whatever they may be. Drugs is anything I, I'd say, I would include cigarettes, pills, though, whatever it is, whatever the substance it is. Well, well most, most of them are legal anyway, so, and they are addictive, most drugs, all, I would say. Some more than others. 1 Corinthians 6 and 12 says, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. They also destroy the body. In Corinthians 6, verses 19 to 20, says, Or do you not know? That your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you are from God, and you are not your own. For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So now I will give you some truths. I will give you some truths on being a good child, one who remembers God in their youth. And some, and also those who don't remember God in their youth, the foolish child, I would say. The foolish child doesn't remember God in his youth. He doesn't listen to advice from his parents or, or elders or Sunday school teacher or anyone who would give them advice. He has to learn the hard way. He also, most of the time, he makes a mess of his life and is out, his marriage, and his job. And he spends most of his most of his life undoing the mess that he made as a result of not remembering God while he was young. So he suffers from these consequences. I would say the wise child remembers God in his youth, follows God's advice, starts out life with a good foundation that is built in God. He is able to accomplish more Good things in life. Good, the wise child will also enjoy life because he did remember God in his youth. What a difference in the quality of the ones who remember God in their youth. That's the mistake I made. I was the foolish child. I hope that you are here listening to this, you don't be like the foolish child and not to remember God in your youth. And it's very, it's very important. It's, it's, it is the most important thing in life to remember God in your youth. You don't want to wait till I get, get old if you even have the chance to. 
when you get old. It might be too late. I pray tonight that if that we be like the, the wise child, the wise children and or wise child, and respect God's authority and control our bodies and obey the gospel so that we could grow spiritually and to bear fruit, becoming an example of a believer. This is what it means to remain to remember God in our youth. I challenge you young people, especially. You know, if you start out in your youth remembering God, you'll have a good head start in life, that's for sure. I know no one can be forced to remember God, but His Word has all the dangers of not remembering Him and also all the benefits of remembering Him. And the benefits outweigh the dangers a million to one, I would say. One thing is for sure. God will remember and will judge us for all that we do. This is why we should fear God and keep His commandments. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verses 13 to 14 says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Young people, you only, you only live once. It's my challenge to you, and older ones as well, including myself. I'm, I'm the main one. I need it more than anybody, I would say. That's how I feel anyway. Yeah, remember God in the days of your youth, or in the age in which we now live. Thank you. Shall we pray? Our precious God, we are so thankful once again that we are able to, to gather and hear from your word, hear the truths of your word, the promises of your word. We thank you for this, God. We just pray as we go tonight, you will take everyone in safety, God, and carry us home in safety. Just pray all these things in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.